Hey there, everybody. This is Aaron from Explosions Incorporated. As usual, I'm following in the footsteps of dazzling Don Riefler. I'm going to talk a little bit today about chemistry and chemical reactions. Now, Don did a great job uh, setting out what chemistry is, what chemicals are. Spoiler if you haven't already seen his video. Chemicals are absolutely everything. He also mentioned in there the difference between a chemical and a physical reaction. Um, I would actually like to expand upon that today because it's something that I've always found really interesting. So what we're going to do is um, let's talk about a physical reaction first. What makes a physical reaction a physical reaction? When you start with a substance and you do something to it, you add energy into that, it causes hopefully some type of reaction. So let's say we have a piece of paper. You know, you can... Uh, crumple it up, use your body's energy, you can tear it up. Those would all be things that could be considered a physical reaction. You were causing something to happen to the paper. You were putting energy into this substance. Now, what makes this a physical reaction, though, is do I still have a piece of paper? Yes, I do. Can I undo what happened to this piece of paper? More or less, I can unfold it. I could put some books on it. I could straighten it out, and I end up with the same piece of paper that I started with. The point is, is that the substance, what we started with, the chemicals, everything is still pretty much where it was before. We haven't fundamentally altered the substance or the properties of this substance. Now, if instead of putting energy into it like this, if we were to, let's say, add in chemical energy, we could get what's called a chemical reaction. Now, every time I do something like this, I need to tell you this. Fire is a tool. It is not a toy. We do not play with fire. We use it as a tool. We use it to educate. We use it to entertain. Sometimes we even use it to edutain, but we do not play with it. Got it? All right, good. So this time now, what we're going to do is we're going to take chemical energy, the form of fire. We're going to add it into the paper. Do I still have a piece of paper? Can I make that piece of paper come back? Nope. Chemical reactions change the substance that you are dealing with. And typically, they are not reversible. Sometimes they are with other chemical reactions, but we're not going to talk about that today. So physical reaction, you keep the substance that you were dealing with. Chemical reaction, you end up with a new substance. Now, I don't want you to try that at home. Well, you might not be able to try that at home unless you have access to nitrocellulose, which you shouldn't unless you are a responsible adult. Unless you are an adult. Let's just leave it at that. This is uh, what I was using. It's called flash paper, otherwise known as nitrocellulose. Interestingly, a film originally was made out of this stuff, which explains why it was so incredibly explosive. And it is cellulose paper, but it also has extra ingredients in it, nitric acids, other things like that. And that increases the flammability, the, the rate at which this burns. It increases it by a lot. This time I'm not going to fold it up. I'm just going to light it on fire and you can see what happens to it. It's great for demonstrations like this because to the eye it appears like it's completely disappeared. Whereas all the atoms that are in that piece of paper are still present. They are just no longer in the form of a piece of paper. They are gases that are floating around us. Now you probably can't do an experiment like this at home and I would really prefer if you didn't. But I do have a chemical reaction that you can do at home. All right. So you're going to need a few things you probably already have sitting around. Number one, you're going to need milk. It does a body good. Make sure it's at least 2%. If the fat content is even higher, all the better. You're also going to need dish detergent. It does not do a body good. Don't drink this. You're going to want some Q-tips. At least one, probably two. You're going to want some food coloring. At least two colors. If you got more, that's awesome. If you don't, no worries. And you're going to need some type of shallow dish to put in a small amount of milk. So go off, get those items. I'll, I'll wait here for you. <laughs> Butts. Oh, you're back. Okay. Sorry. All right. Cool. So here we go. Okay. Once you've poured a little bit of milk into the shallow dish, you're going to want to add some drops of food coloring. Try to add them carefully so they spread as little as possible. I'm going to use some green and then I'm going to use some blue.
There we go. Now what you want to do is you want to dip a Q-tip in a small amount of the dish detergent and then don't stir the milk but just touch the Q-tip to the milk. Now you can repeat this a few times, and each time that you do, you'll see you get motion in the milk, causing the food coloring to move and swirl and mix. What's going on is a few things here. The dish detergent lowers the surface tension of the liquid, which makes it easier for the food coloring to move around in the milk. The detergent itself also affects the protein in milk, changes the shape of that molecule. And as it does, it actually sets it in motion. And that's reflected in the movement of the coloring. And then also the detergent actually mixes with the fat that is in milk, forms what's called micelles. It's a specific type of molecule. And once again, that formation generates a small amount of movement. You can actually see, if you're looking very closely, when I take the Q-tip back out of the milk, the motion still continues. Now, if you have a bunch of different colors, some reds and some yellows in there, you can make some really interesting pictures. And this actually will continue until you reach an equilibrium where the micelles stop forming and then eventually it will become still and it'll actually end up turning kind of a brownish color as all the uh, food coloring finally mixes together. So there you have it, a couple chemical reactions to brighten up your day. As usual, we welcome comments and suggestions as to what we should be talking about. I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I am Aaron with Explosions Incorporated. Now get out of here, you crazy kids. Go do some science.